Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Aarons. And Carly Burr. The word dedication gets thrown around when doing things in life, being consistent and working hard towards your goals no matter what. And we have tried to do that here for as long as possible, but we had a 4th of July vacation we had to do. Alas. Yep. We uh, we broke our consistency. We're really sorry about that, but we're back here with week 46. Only six weeks left, and then it's a full year. So. The guilt haunts us. Yeah, it really does. We, this is the first time we broke it. We broke our broke our fast. So, oh, well, life goes on. I mean, I guess the biggest thing would be like, do we celebrate now 52 episodes, or do we celebrate the first time we drop the podcast? Because it does push off our... I would technical. celebrate I would celebrate the first time we dropped the podcast because that would be a year of mostly consistent mm-hmm. releases. So I think that we, it's it's fair enough. I mean, once we get to that year mark, I feel as though we have a reason to celebrate. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Um there's other things I was taking up some time like my other channel, believe it or not, if you guys don't know that, I had to I'm sorry for you guys. I did put a little bit more time into that one because we did break the 1,000 subscriber mark, and we are now part of the YouTube partnership program. It was a huge goal that Tommy had set for himself, and you achieved that goal in like what eight months? Yeah, it was. It was. We had a game plan. We had a we had a business plan, all that stuff, and we were able to execute on it. And it's been a crazy ride. I'm not saying like we we we're not the next Logan Paul and Jake Paul when it comes to money or the Kardashians or anything like that. No sex tape is coming out yet. Um, Yet. But if the money's good with this economy the way it is, all I'm saying is not, nothing's off the table. Nothing's off the table at all. But the point is, that was really cool to hit that goal. I know it's kind of like I got my mind all flummoxed there, and I really apologize about that. But here we go again with week 46. And I hope everyone had a great 4th of July weekend. Oh my gosh. I hope everyone got as refreshed and just vegged out as mm-hmm. hard as we did. Especially with Stranger Things. I Oh my gosh, yes. And I literally, so everybody that I've talked to has had such a great 4th of July weekend. Um, Everybody said that they feel recharged, got to spend a lot of time with family and friends. Mm -hmm. Um, We drank a little too hard, therefore we're not drinking this evening, but we will tell you what we drank drank over the weekend. Um, I'll let Tommy bring that in, considering I am the one telling you a very long story this evening. So you want me to tell them what you drank? We. Oh, collectively like, i don't even know what you actually drank all like, I I, the same thing you a did a little bit of tequila um ah fudge um what was uh the can called the can drink you got whoa it was lemon and lime guinness no it wasn't a beer it was a whiskey mixed with some kind of guinness thing just green that's yeah, all i remember something like that so <laughs> It, it was really good. I, also had, like, I guess we're not whiskey. telling you what we drank. Yeah, like no, it was a citrus and lime whiskey. It uh, wasn't tequila. So is it a Jack Daniels? Yeah, something like that. But it was really good. Link in the episode description below when, when we when we drop this episode. We'll find it. Um, but we'll you know, it was it. really good. Then just hamburgers, hot dogs, washing stuff. Oh my gosh, off. yeah. I, we haven't had those like hamburgers, uh, hot dogs on the grill in forever. Yeah, Let's really be good. honest, we really have good. not had it. Which is not bad. Which I went to. I had a doctor's so checkup since like our last episode lost a little weight i'm down a few pounds which is pretty crazy um like not a lot like this is not the leanest i've ever been but like it's more of like i haven't been watching my weight or what i've eaten but my weight's still like it's down a pound i think it was which is impressive which is still like oh shit i did not and this is the thing is like my doctor was in the middle of the day too so it's like okay clearly my weight could have been like better like you know what i mean like if like you know you weigh yourself at noon after you've eaten and had a bottle of water or coffee it's like all right clearly my body's not as lean as possible so right. I'm like, ah, oh, cool. That's, I mean, I'm not even at my, my leanest. Right. So I think it's even better. Um, hey, the one thing I guys want to riff on, so I do this in my other podcast more now, and I want to do this before we start the story is, Carla, what are your thoughts on people on Facebook on the 4th of July that I'm pretty sure are born here? They, they are natives, guys. So I know this is crazy because like this podcast is so international. No. 4th of July is us just celebrating kicking the British out, and we shoot a bunch of fireworks <laughs> off, we drink barbecue, the whole shtick, right? So anyway, with that said, it's a tradition now over here on things like Facebook to be aghast and shocked that how is it every year on this one day people shoot fireworks off? It's incredibly offensive. Like, And it, how dare you shoot fireworks clear into 10 p.m. past my bedtime? 
it it's like i don't know like i get i wonder if it's because like there's more social media now it makes it more like a vacuum because this is the one thing i've realized with doing i remember all negative things online get pushed meaning get we don't 100%. get to see the good things on facebook you see all of the negative things on facebook yeah because like it's like, like i don't know like i, I noticed it a couple years ago the comments of like fireworks stop doing it my dog me anxiety horses whatever right but then like a couple more years passed and it's like like this year was the like the crescendo of so many posts it was so stuff. many people was saying please don't you know do fireworks people have ptsd dogs run away from their homes horses get injured it's like okay well plan ahead i've got horses what did i do i drugged those suckers up i put them in their stalls mm -hmm. i turned on 14 fans in the barn and i turned music on so do you think they heard the fireworks no i highly doubt it they were in la la land the dog what do you do you make sure that he's safe don't let him outside without a leash on or he's gonna run away like just plan ahead people because it's like you sound like fireworks are a new thing Right, exactly. Like and that's the whole thing. There. It's not like it just started like in 2010 or something. Fireworks have always been a thing. People enjoy going to fireworks and watching them. And I can understand, yes, be considerate of your neighbors. Don't do fireworks after 10 p.m. That is annoying. I want to go to bed at that point. If it is, so my only caveat to that is let's say, now I'm going to give a better example because this weekend was weird because like the fourth dropped on a Monday. But let's right. say it's like, the 4th of July is a Friday night. Listen, if it would, don't be such a dick online. Yeah, it's going to probably be till midnight. If, if the 4th dropped on a Friday, just assume that that Friday night's going to suck. Right. Sa then Saturday night, it'd be like, all right, come on. Then Sunday night, it'd be like, okay, cool. Like, this cut it out. But when it's like the night of, like for us, is like Sunday and into, into the 4th. It was really tough because everybody was celebrating literally friday night saturday night and sunday night yeah. and monday night because monday was the actual fourth of july and i was like okay come on guys like literally how are there still fireworks existing exactly so like i think that messes it up a little bit but i don't know why it just really started to irk me because it's like more people are complaining about this one thing and it's like i don't know it's like it didn't bother me it's like and I don't want to get to be tinfoil hatty, but like it's because it's the 4th of July. Well, we don't live in the inner city either like other no, people do. But it's not even that. Maybe it's because of the Loudoun County Syndrome. Like, there's so many people I know that are Loudoun County where they complain about this stuff. Or it's like, you know, my neighbors, I have horses, they're shooting fireworks off. It's like, okay, well, you knew this was coming for like 12 Plan months ahead. out of the year. Right. Make like, sure your horses are safe. Bed them early. Or it's like, I had this one kid say like, oh yeah, this person like called the police because like they had to get up the next morning. And it's like, people were shooting fireworks in the neighborhood. It's like, no, really? It's like, come on, come on. Man ahead. <laughs> is it because it's the 4th of July? Like, if this was on any other holiday, would people complain as much? Like, I mean, not to get all tinfoil. Is there any other stuff. holiday that causes so much noise besides maybe New Year's? Probably New Year's is a great example. Yeah. That's actually a fan. People complain about New Year's too. I don't feel like it's at the same magnitude. magnitude because it's cold. It's usually generic speaking. True. It's people are, time, are so not outside, stuff. really. I think people still shoot off stuff. Yeah. Um, but I just, it's just so weird to me. Like, it's just getting worse and worse. Like, people hate, people are trying to make this thing to ban fireworks. And it's like, ah, it's always been there. If this was any other culture, like, this is American culture is doing the fireworks. Mm -hmm. And if this was England's culture or, you know, a, an Asian culture thing. No one would be like, ah, oh, we should ban this. But just because it's like, this is our thing, it feels like, I don't know why I'm like more protective of this. Like it's under attack. But I think it's because it's like such an American. Right now, America is under attack. Yeah. And again, not trying to get too political. I know. But it just feels like going down this that is rabbit our hole. thing. This is the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. It's fireworks. It's hot dogs. Like that is all you need is the apple pie in a baseball game. And that is like the most American holiday. Yep. Like, you know, we gave you a month. Like, can we just have the fourth where the fireworks go off? And like, again, if it's this bad, like, I don't know, go sit in a hotel somewhere, go pad it up. Right. But it's just everyone every year. Like, like I said, uh, prepare. Or like, what, <laughs> fish will die. Birds will drop out of the sky was something I read. It's like, oh, oh like, yeah, I saw that God. too. Fish are going to die. Chill Birds out. die. Little... Bees. It throws the bees off of their like, path. You can make that argument about every single thing. Like, right. I, mean, I don't know guys i know sorry but it's just like i just like i please let me know down in the comment section like am i the only one seeing more of those because like this year just got me up because like it felt like every time i went on like facebook instagram whatever it's like 
everyone was complaining. Right. Well, everyone, but a lot of people were complaining. It's like, this is like, it's gotten worse. Social so. media was full of it. It's, Just yeah. negativity about the fireworks. But then when I saw like actual people and no one had, no one was negative about it in real life. In real life, everybody was like, oh yeah, we're well, going to see the fireworks. And that's, a, that's the craziest thing too, besides, um, you know, our, our, our favorite viewer, which I don't even know if she's watching anymore, but shout out, you know who you are. Um, people leave comp people act differently online and i don't think you truly understand this until you try to make a living online and it's like oh yeah people suck you yeah. know but it's also weird and i'm just gonna say this before we get the story it's so weird because you you hear about how like the algorithms like promote certain things but then when you start doing this and you're like oh shit it's real like if i have a video and no one pays attention to it it's dead completely don't care if it's spirits and ghost stories don't care if it's my other channel um, we had this one person leave this remark, which was like, I think on Spears and Ghost Stories, they said like, oh, does he have a learning disability? Yeah. That episode tracked. <laughs> they did. And then especially in DMV, if I have a bunch of people commenting saying like, oh, what you're doing is terrible, blah, blah, blah. You know what happens? That video does extremely well because it's almost like the algorithm like, oh, this is controversial. Yeah. Push this. If If it's just boring or like just a documentary, let's say. That's not gonna get traction unless it's like some kind of spicy stuff. But otherwise, it wants controversy. I've seen this enough. If I post something on Facebook that is controversial in the sense that it forces people to comment, the more comments, the more it'll track. And so you can say something outlandish, but all it matters is a bunch of people start arguing with you. If people argue with your point, Facebook pushes that more. And I don't know, I think that's not healthy because it does force these opinions where it's like, oh, the the Jake Pauls of the world, the ones that just back in the days really invented himself but it's like people and especially with tiktok now like you see that a lot where the more outlandish you are the more you get promoted right. and it creates that toxic cycle right. which is like like the crazy overweight people on tiktok that like dance half naked they're famous now yeah but it's because it, no it, shame but i bet it gets promoted because you know people online are like, oh this is terrible yeah and more people say it's terrible it's like you this is the thing that really blew my mind is like you do realize the more you comment right. it literally has the opposite effect yep it, it literally makes it more you're throwing gasoline on fire yeah. i just want i hope you get demonetized somebody like posted that on facebook <laughs> i hope no one finds out about this and it's, <laughs> it's like, like you commenting this you, literally is helping other people find out about opinion this opinion about the thing brings attention to that thing mm -hmm. and i just it blows my mind like things that i don't like you know what i do i ignore it because or i'll talk to my friends i won't post it because i'm it helps promote it right so if you guys hate something online don't promote it by sharing it or commenting. Tell your friends and everything about it, but don't comment because it just literally promotes it in the algorithm. So that's a fun fact just from the inside where I've seen like it. Like, yeah, don't be like, I hope no one finds out about this. Well, congratulations. You just, you helped it. So anyway, with that said, uh, drinking that, we did have tequila. We did have a little bit of Jack Chandler's crisp in the lime. Um, and I did try a Bud Light and I didn't like it. I just don't, I can't do beer. We don't do beer. Neither beer of us. We can't get into we'll, we'll it. cider. That's fine. But I can't do beer beer. No. But that's so weird. But anyway, yeah. I haven't fun. had a beer beer that I've enjoyed yet. Um, anyway, you did touch on a little bit about what caused me to find this story. I totally binged Stranger Things season four. No spoilers. Was it good? No spoilers. Hasn't it Tom it. hasn't seen it yet. I totally binged it without him because I can't wait for him to do everything. And I'm, I, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I think it was the best season yet. I really liked it. Cried mm. like a baby at the end. Better than one? Or <sighs> up on par? Up on par. Up on par. But um, it's got me like wanting to just, like start playing D&D. &D, and I started to research a little bit on uh, maybe the mythos behind uh, Demigorgons and um, Vecna and things like that. So you, you know what's crazy to me is like the power song like that. Did you know that one song, we won't name it for the people who haven't seen it, is like literally so re retrending again? So popular right Isn't now. Isn't that crazy? The power the only stuff? song everyone uses on a TikTok right now because it was from Stranger Things. And I just, I can't, I'm sorry. We'll do this one again. Sorry, sorry. I, I saw wondered, a song like, from the 70s, right? When people write this stuff, like, do you think they think about that? Like, which song should we get that we know is going to be popular again? Like, there was this one song that I always have in my head when I'm driving. So, uh, so, uh, so, so by the way, I guess the Adderall's wearing off. Um, I always have to drive under 25 miles an hour when I do the back roads. Drives are crazy. Because <sighs> my dog, her dog, our dog, Jojo, he won't stick his head out the window if it's above 25. And 
He has now gotten to the point. He never would stick his nose out. And now he looks like James Dean in a convertible like like this. He literally hangs his little leg out Just the one little leg, maybe. And he's just like, what's up? But he, he'll, he'll do the breeze stuff. And I keep thinking of this song. It's like, now here you go again. Oh, the you skateboard song. You freedom. Yeah, yeah, I forget. Sarah McLaughlin or something like that? I don't know the name. But anyway, that song got stuck in our head. And it didn't exist until that one TikTok thing. And it makes it trend. So I wonder, like, do these people, like, ask to be like, hey, can my song be on, like, Stranger Things? So it can get, like, rolling again? I don't know. I just thought that was really cool. And yes, JoJo does look cool. He's super cute. You singing right then just made me remember a dream I had the other night. Literally. Tommy wanted to be a professional singer in my dream. Like, he wanted to be a musician. And he was going out and doing live music and everything. But, like, at the same time, I was, like, proud of him for doing what he wanted to do. But also, I felt really ashamed because he's tone deaf. Like, so tone deaf. So I was literally holding back this whole time during my dream. And whole time, I mean, like, it was literally like a whole day long dream. And I was just thinking, I don't know how I'm going to bring this up. But I mean, hey, if he gets famous by being a a tone deaf musician, I guess that's going to work. But he can't sing. That sounds, so this is what happens when you drink alcohol and you're not used to drinking alcohol. A lot of different alcohols never mix. Yeah, I had a weird fever dream, too. It was like. I forget what it was. You were an orange. I was an orange. I was an actual fruit. And I was like a banana. You were an actual yeah. fruit. But then you gave birth to an apple and you were upset because hor- like like apples can't ride horses because horses eat apples. Apples can't ride horses, but oranges and bananas can? You're weird. At least I was a banana. <laughs> At least I was people in my dream. I mean, like a penis. So like, that makes sense. Like that, that makes sense. What? A banana banana orange wouldn't that have been weirder if i was like a strawberry or cherries that'd be funny <laughs> <laughs> tom the cherry <laughs> okay and peaches are usually somebody's butt right anyway or i guess that would be an eggplant it's a booty Wait, i don't want to be an eggplant is wow. an eggplant a fruit wow wow no okay an eggplant is a vegetable okay Anyway, continue. So there, there's all my thoughts. I, I waited. This is the first time she heard that, by the way. It uh, is. It's kind of a long time waiting to see her reaction to that online. Are this you... is like the longest we've gone. Actually, long form conversation like this on our podcast. It's kind of nice. I, I do this a lot more on mine. Like, I wonder if everybody's going to hate it. I don't know. Who, who knows? They haven't had. Oh, by the way, last thing, I guess. Huge shout out that um, the last episode we did, the 411, hit 100 views. It's oh, 100 views. yeah. 100 um, people saw we, our stuff. And we, uh, well, 100 views on YouTube. <gasps> on youtube alone on youtube Heck alone yeah, yeah. We're viral and we're almost up to uh 4500 downloads all in all and we have over uh 80 no i'm sorry i read that wrong we're up to 60 downloads on spotify and apple and all that stuff so we're almost close to 200 downloads total for the missing 411 oh cool so that's really cool you guys made that one so big i loved it i think carly's story was amazing it's one of the best stories i've I know, listened I keep to thinking about it where i forgot like what i was supposed to do i was just like in the moment of the story yeah which is what i love about this is like if you get a good story it's like holy fuck like you just get like glued to it so anyway with all that said carly what is our festivities for the evening well tom uh today's story is called the demogorgon I had to make sure i was recording the ibis <laughs> you know, i was like oh shit that would have been, been so mad yeah, i was, like, I was oh. watching the time go okay, <laughs> In the 70s, I and my mom moved from our quaint British town to a creepy town in the middle of Arizona for no reason. Although that reason may have been because I pissed off the local British mafia because I threw rocks at their latest drug shipping van down the street. So anyway, I pissed them off and I and my mom left the country and moved to the small town in Arizona since that was the cheapest option for the two of us. Mm. I was an only child, and when my mom got pregnant, my dad went out to get milk and never came back. America was a huge culture shock for me. In Britain, we didn't have guns. In the USA, obese rednecks drive around in four-wheelers eating McDonald's and shooting AR-15s. The town I moved into- Wait, 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 what? Uh, AR-15s? Where the hell are you at? Arizona. 
How many times has this guy got to say he's moved to Arizona? Has said it three times already. I just like, but but the fact that like there is AR-15s in Arizona. I don't know. This poor little Briton probably doesn't know what an AR-15 is. Fair enough. Go continue. This is this is true facts. The town I moved into was just big enough to have one school, one school that taught t- kindergarten, elementary school, middle school, and high school. On the very first day of school, when I was 13, I met this kid named Ed. He was also British, a little overweight, and had pale skin, messy dark hair, hazel eyes, and somehow had beard stubble at 13 years old. He wore a light gray graphic t-shirt, shorts, and white trainers. I don't know what a trainer is. Is that shoes? Are trainers teach sneakers? Yeah. He had a very weird and offensive sense of humor, exactly the kind that I had. We instantly became best friends and still going strong. And to that hot, sunny, and stupid day during the last day of March break. Hold on. What did he just say? We instantly became best friends and are still going strong. I honestly don't know why we even call the breaks by month. All year round, the weather is basically the same. When we were both 15, we wanted to have a well-spent last day of March break. Ed and I made the mistake of biking around the outskirts of town in the Sonoran Desert. I don't know what a March break is. Maybe if anybody's... Spring break. I guess it's the same concept as spring break. Um, Yeah, yeah, because it usually does happen in March, doesn't it? After breaking wine bottles, making Molotov cocktails, scaring snakes, and generally being rambunctious teenagers, I instantly stopped my bike when I saw the caved-in entrance of what looked like a freaking abandoned mine shaft tucked between two large boulders. Is that a bloody mine shaft, I said? Ed instantly hit the brakes, and his 150-pound body flew and hit a mound of sand. I don't know why, but, like, all of this so far just makes me think of Stranger Things, because that was filmed, like, out there and everything. A few medium-sized rocks were covering the bottom of the entrance, but we could easily move them. And by we, I mean me. Ed was way too lazy to move anything beside the TV remote. After clearing all of the rocks, I stood near the entrance, Ed watching, and he suddenly threw a huge rock down the mine shaft tunnel. A few medium-sized rocks were covering the bottom of the entrance, but we could easily move them. And by we, I mean Ed. By we, I mean me, because Ed was way too lazy to move anything besides a TV remote. After clearing all the rocks, I stood near the entrance, Ed watching, and he suddenly threw a large rock down the mineshaft's tunnel. Ed and I jumped on our bikes and GTFO'd just before a thing climbed out and screeched at us. I didn't get a good look at it, but that might have been because Ed and I were flipping it off and laughing. How drunk were these people? Uh, they were, were they teenagers. High? I possibly, very possibly. It's like uh, you're just very chill with seeing a creature. And besides, this is Arizona. Isn't there a Skinwalker Ranch out there? Like you don't know what the hell this is. Anyway, sorry. Ed and I biked all the way back to my house, laughing about the obese crackhead who was living in the mine shaft. I think they just thought it was some redneck. Some that hobo. was just like hobo chilling in a in a mine cra- mine shaft. Minecraft. Minecraft shaft. <laughs> Did you see that? I laughed as we parked our bikes and got inside Ed's house. See what, boys? Ed's mom asked in that classic British mom cliche voice. Marlo and I saw some cheeky crackhead climbing out of a tunnel and screaming at us, mom. Ed laughed. Ed's mom sighed and walked away, mumbling something about Ed being high or having an overactive <laughs> imagination. <laughs> Moms know best. She was probably talking about the first one. While at school the next day, all Ed and I talked about was that drunk bloke living in the mine shaft. A few guys believed us, and a few didn't, saying that it was just some bat or something. Fucking Americans. Hey, a kid called out, named Ryan. He was tall, with short blonde hair and aggressive attitude, and was popular for starting and ending fights. What do you want? Ed asked. Ed usually got scared and made the stupidest moves in these kinds of situations. Mm -hmm. For example, the previous year, I had witnessed Ryan unleash a million F-words at Ed, who didn't bat an eye, and Ed replied with an F yeah. He came home with a broken leg after that. Jeez. Wow. Bully much? Shut up, British boy. (laughs) You know that mineshaft you losers are talking about? 
Oh, come on. Who talks like that? What about it, Mr. Future Al-Qaeda leader? Wait, Al-Qaeda? Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda. I'm going to re-say that one. Al-Qaeda. What about it, Mr. Future Al-Qaeda leader? (laughs) Al-Qaeda. I still said it wrong. I shot back. Ryan fumed. I dare you go to the mine shaft or else. Or else what, you huge... I was interrupted. You huge coon? Was he going to say coon or something? He was going to say the other C word. (gasps) Or else I'll break every bone in your body, Ryan coldly said. Ed burst out laughing. Ooh, so scary. Well, fuck you. We were going back anyways. Ryan grumbled and put his finger to his neck, making a slicing motion. To probably intimidate us, it didn't work. Good lord. So after school, Ed and I went to my house to collect supplies. I used a whole roll of electrical tape to fasten a 10-inch kitchen knife to a broken-off broomstick, making a makeshift spear. What the hell? Damn. I don't know why they would make a spear if they thought it was a poor little homeless guy. That seems very intense for what's going on. I know. The thing, Ed snagged two headlamps and his veteran uncle's flare gun and a real 45 revolver and extra batteries. I also brought a roll of bright green fishing line so we could tie it at the entrance and find our way back out. Us two British boys in America going into one of many abandoned mine shafts in Arizona. We biked back to the outskirts of town at the edge of town where I found the mine shaft. It was there, but no naked crackhead. I wish. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> just, we're not cliff net this. I, we apologize for the story being a little grainy. It is what it is. Um, but I'm going to cliff net this for everybody. We can't all be winners. So um, international kids, they come to Arizona. They, is, am I correct? They're international? Yeah. So they're not from the United States. Correct. They they get transported to a new country, a new country. Transported. And uh, transported, fly, whatever. And so they find apparently a homeless person, which apparently they are acting like in, let's say, Great Britain, in London, across the pond. They have no homeless issues. So it's probably a little jarring, to say the least, that they come here. Like, oh, my goodness. We have, I think they have crackhead. We have homeless people. And their first thing is like, let's go fucking kill them. I know. I know. Like, I don't think they want to kill them. I think they just want to what? poke it. So it, it kind of comes down to two points. Then. They're looking for a, trouble. A, that's, They're bored out of their minds. Is that what they do over there in London? No. I don't, look. Timmy. Apparently, that's what they do out there in in Arizona. I, yeah, but they're not from Minnesota. Arizona. Not from Arizona. I know that. Which means they're foreign, so they really think like either back in their native country, it's fun to pick on the homeless people, or it's a very it's a very rare thing for them. They come over here to America and they're like, oh wow, these feral creatures. Potentially. The hobos. Potentially. God, continue. Anyway, there was no naked crackhead. I wish there was. So bloody dark in here, Ed said as we walked down the shaft. The mine shaft was dark, wet, and pissy, just as I expected it. Just as you. Anyway. There were about a billion cobwebs all around, and just as many spiders. We made a few turns and found a huge entrance to another cave system, which had a sign outside that read, "Do not enter. Extreme danger." Well, you want to enter? I asked. Maybe Ed said. But damn, why do you think that the "Do not enter" sign is here? Bloody government! I replied. What? Probably just want to keep dumb kids out like us. Who is this guy? Ed laughed and checked his huge revolver was loaded. <laughs> what is happening? The thing was his uncle's raging, uncle's uncle's Taurus raging hunter that Ed had taken. And that thing could kill bears and even elephants with the right aiming. If a naked crackhead were to jump at us, he was probably screwed. The cave tunnel led to a huge opening in the shaft and a smaller cave entrance at the back of the room. The whole place was littered with mining tools, pickaxes, broken lanterns. I turned my flashlight's beam to the right, and it lit a human arm. What the? The arm looked old, and there was not much left except for a few paper-thin bounds of ancient flesh. It was mostly skeletal, definitely human, and seemed to have been severed at the shoulder. The arm was still holding a large combat knife, as if the owner had been killed during the battle. Is that real? Ed asked. I poked the arm with my spear. The joints broke off and rotted fingers fell to the cave floor. Pretty sure it is. 
Without warning, we heard a loud growl. I turned the flashlight to the source and saw the monster just before it pounced on me and held me down. The creature holding me down was huge, at least seven feet tall, while crouching, and had very long fingers with claws. It was humanoid and pale, with seven tiny black eyes, very skinny, yet very muscular, with huge backward bending arms as it walked, and a line of thin black spiked protrusions spikes protruding out of its back the head of the thing was weird as hell it had a long predatory skull as a head with unnaturally long and sharp teeth and inside the black that was black eye sockets mm. were two deep sunken eyes it also had an impressive 12 point rack of deer antlers atop its head that sounds more like a like a god like a mythos I don't, know, I don't know what I'm saying. That's pretty intense. Yeah. After my spear flew out of my hand, I heard a few gunshots and saw Ed standing behind the monster, firing into the thing's back. The monster screeched, and then the creature's face opened up into three bony jaws like the Demogorgon from Stranger Things, revealing a fleshy maw inside, filled with dozens of teeth behind the skull. I pulled a kitchen knife out of my pocket and stabbed the thing right in the chest, leaving the knife stuck in the monster, and kicked it off my body. It suddenly leapt and swallowed Ed's gun arm, who was still holding the large revol revolver. Ed screamed and fired the pistol while it was deep inside the monster's mouth, and the bullets launched deep into the monster's internal organs. The monster instantly went limp and let go of Ed's arm. Ed's arm wasn't too injured, only a few shallow cuts from the teeth. Wait, Ed, wait, only... Okay, never mind. Continue, sorry. Ed let a healthy flow of colorful British... Ex British, <laughs> there it is, there it is! ...swear words explode out of his mouth. Was that, a, was that a fucking goal? He he yelled. You're damn right, Ed said. The thing is one ugly motherfucker. I heard several more growls, then saw the ceiling light up with multiple eyes reflecting the light of our flashlights. They're just now like, hey, what the hell is all this The eyes from? of the Demigorgon. We both decided to GTFO, and we ran out of the cave in mere minutes while getting chased by these Demigorgons who seemed to hate the sunlight. We biked the whole six miles back to the house in five minutes, slamming the door and screaming. We decided to tell Ed's uncle, Jansen, who was an ex-soldier and Navy SEAL. And he came up with a very good formulated plan. No, kids, you're crazy. You must have been high. But he created a plan. The next day after school, we went to Jansen's basement and picked out some guns, knives, and bombs. Ed would keep the Taurus Raging Hunter. I don't know what that means. Taurus Ranging Hunter. It's What's a that? weapon. Okay. While I used a small, sawn-off shotgun. Where are they getting all of these weapons? And Jansen would use his old AR-15 with six magazines. Jansen was made a... Jansen had made a bomb with some gasoline, makeshift C4, and some wires, which one of us would attach to the cave walls while the other fended off the monsters. I feel like this is kind of like a Stranger Things situation, though, because, let's be honest, they would go back and try to kill all these monsters if they found them. That's basically what they do throughout the whole season, is going back and killing monsters. Let's look on the screen right now. So this is the this is the handgun. That's the handgun that we're talking about right now. I I just again that's that's one honker of a handgun. I, I again I just want to say like this is literally a parody of a British person writing. It's as so if funny how America would do it's things. It's so funny. It's like what do American kids do? They're like, hey Jim, hey you this guy go never find moved some to America. Homeless people and yep. shoot them with our big old guns because yep. everyone's got AR-15. Make it crackhead. And uh, no, you know a naked crackhead. And you know revolvers that look like something out of a goddamn video game that you shoot an alien with. <laughs> I should have read this whole thing with a British accent. Oh my god, you should have. Because like, there's no way you would use this gun. This thing is massive. Yeah, yeah. My brother, I think, has one, and uh, he, 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 it's got some, it's got some kickback. Woo! Look at that thing go. Pow, pow. That's a 44 Magnum. Wow! Holy crap! Few people are just going to randomly have this thing. I'm sorry. Like, that to me is just nuts. Holy was... guacamole. 
It's like, and you know, when we moved to America, everyone had to get a cannon. So we had, we had a cannon. <laughs> we had to learn how to make bombs with gasoline. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm saying it with such a. I don't know why you're West hick, Virginian. You go straight hick, to West Virginia. Like, hey. Every time I go to a hick accent, didn't when you it should be British. Live in Great Britain for a couple of weeks. I didn't live there. Well, I, I stayed there. You didn't there. live there, really, really. So you I left. I stayed on there. Okay, so you stayed there. Do an accent. Do an accent. Do an accent. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get back to it. Okay, okay. Hold on. Good morning to you. How are you, Governor? Hold on, hold on. I can't do it while I read. Before we went, Jansen taught me the basics of the gun shooting in the desert behind the town. The and I shot shooting. a few. The gun shooting. <laughs> that's literally what it says. He taught the, me a little the, bit the, of the, the gun, gun shooting. shooting. And, and, and the stabby stab. The and stabby stab. America. And the cha cha. America. <laughs> I shot a few beer bottles to practice. Okay. I was shooting beer bottles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't even. This feels like a bot made this. This is this like story. honestly. Now I want the banjo. And then after we had our banjo, nom, 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 nom. we're uh, gonna we're gonna banjo it banjo it to bed. Uh, All right, hold on. Okay, kid, start arming the bomb. Jansen handed Ed the explosive contraption. Ed got to work securing the bomb to the ne nest of the demigorgons, while Jansen and I stood on guard. I heard growling, then the sound of fast-paced footsteps walking along the walls i snapped my shotgun i snapped my shotgun to the noise and the barrel flashlight lit up a huge demigorgon one that was maybe eight feet tall and i fired multiple shots into the monster's face jansen with his semi-auto ar-15 took out five of the demigorgons climbing along the walls how, how do you see walls you didn't go inside <laughs> One of the monsters <laughs> screeched and tackled me, slashing into my plate carrier with its sharp talons. I took out a kitchen knife, kicked the monster off me, and threw the knife at the monster. Why are you throwing knives if you have a gun? <laughs> the blade windmilled <laughs> inch by inch. <laughs> I can't. The blade windmilled inch by inch towards the demigorgon's face, and the handle side hit. And the knife harmlessly and immediately bounced off the monster's ugly face. I swear Jansen to... turned from firing at all the other demigorgons coming out of the back cave entrance and turned to his and turned his attention to the big one fighting with me, and fired a rapid succession of automatic rifle shots. Automatic <laughs> now? They have a machine yeah. gun. <laughs> automatic rifle shots and killed the demigorgon. A whole new wave of demigorgons came out of the Dear cave tunnel, God. all crawling across the cave walls and flanking us from behind. Ed, better hurry up. They're flanking us. <laughs> from now on, guys, I will make sure I proofread all stories before Carly reads them. She gives us great ones, and then she gives us some like this. She's, there's highs and lows. There's highs and lows. Sometimes. They're flanking us. How close is this house to the cave, by the way? How the hell can you see the cave from there? <laughs> They're flanking us. They're flanking us. In the desert. Ed nailed the last screw into the cave wall and attached the bomb, then lit the fuse. Done, he yelled. Marlo, let's go. Wait, how did he close up the cave? Ed was doing it while Jansen what? and Marlo no. shot and threw knives at the Demigorgons. Where's the nunchucks? They need nunchucks now. So, so this is the other thing about okay we'll get to that in a minute i'll write almost finish the story but, wait, wait, wait. I'm almost so he's finished. nailing wood into the rock how do you close up the thing with wood that's besides the point <laughs> don't put logic into this don't thing don't put logic into this story tom we're over here with automatic ar-15s and and throwing knives at demi gorgons continue continue okay anyway um Ed nailed the last screw into the cave wall and attached the bomb, then lit the fuse. Done, he yelled. Marlo, let's go. Jansen, Ed, and I cleared the goals. I'm sorry, cleared the demigorgons blocking the entrance and ran out. At the very last second, as the bomb was ticking, a demigorgon grabbed my ankle and dragged me back down. I punched and stabbed at the monster, but it wouldn't let go. Ed, a little fucking help here? Ed turned around and threw the knife. Unlike, there he is. <laughs> there he goes again. <laughs> Unlike the last time, the knife hit perfectly and it hit the demigorgon straight in the neck. It screeched and let go. And the three of us 
ran like hell out of the mine shaft. I like to think Ed never killed a fucking thing in this whole show, and he met, every time he threw the knife, it hit with the butt of the knife. Just ah, oh, damn it! Think, and this is the one time where Ed's like, "No, it's my turn to shine." And he throws it, and he actually finally stabs one. But all night he's missing. Yep, just not killing anything. <laughs> just throwing silver. Three of us ran like hell out of the mine shaft, still being chased by a horde of demi gorgons, and back to the surface. I thought they were already to the surface. <laughs> I heard one last Demi Gorgon shriek before the bomb exploded and the ground shook as every monster in the shaft was blown sky high. Later Dear on. Oh God, how'd they clear the explosion? Later on, <laughs> when I was in my 30s, my army plane crashed into Antarctica where I had one of the most strict. No, I'm sorry. It's over. It's over. They blew sky high. That's the end of the story. You're going to have to edit it. No, that continue, out. continue, continue. No, no, continue, no. no it's, it's a link to another story. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry guys, we just wanted to have a little slapstick humor this week with, with the whole Stranger Things thing. Um, and this is honestly gets into something that I get pet peeve about. Not I, everyone is a winner. I, I get into arguments with so many people about it. it's like storytelling how important it is, and we see it here where you don't need special effects, you don't need anything, a good story. And I, I genuinely am like the the um the house in the woods, which is one that we did a long time ago. And I've actually thought about doing that one again. Now that we're a little bit more prim and proper doing that. Story yeah. Again. Yeah. Um, the bent, uh, so the bent woman, <laughs> the, the crooked woman, the limping woman, the limping, woman, yes. the limping woman, this one, uh, the one that you did the other day, a good story is riveting. Absolutely riveting. You don't need special effects. You don't even need a TV. And I think this is important because then when you get onto the big screen, those same principles still apply. It's a good story. And then you can sprinkle in the special effects. And I just don't like when people are like, just shut up and turn your brain off. Um, and, I, and I keep going back to the whole like Game of Thrones fiasco as one because I think it's the most glaring, obvious, like it's so blatantly bad of like bad storytelling that persons with half a brain cell rub together and be like, oh yeah, that was bad. I didn't like that. But it, <laughs> I should, didn't like that. But it, it gets right here. <laughs> and it's just like little flaws like I have with like Stranger Things is like, Demigorns went from being indestructible to like they could be killed with bullets then now you can like maybe all you need is like a flamethrower or you can like stab them with a sword so like their their power level has fluctuated a lot from season one to season four and it's that's things true like, but you have to remember which is, that just... even though their their uh power level has fluctuated that is basically our mental state we didn't know what would kill them in the beginning that's why we thought that they were indestructible. Well, we were like, oh my gosh, we got to try all these things. Guns aren't killing them. Well, yeah, that's because guns don't kill them. What actually kills them? We found out later throughout the episode that Elle could like, you know, kill them with her mind or flamethrower. But you find that out later. So in the beginning, you think that they're indestructible. So I feel like it was a cop out answer. Because it's people filling in the gaps because you've had four seasons. Season one, they shot it with guns. They did a bunch of different things like that. They did have flamethrowers. It didn't work because there's only one of them. And it was extremely OP. So you think, like, oh, wow, this is a supernatural thing, blah, blah, blah. Cool. That's your storyline. I'm fine with that. But that's what you set up in season one. And then L does a nosebleed and kind of, like, obliterates it back into the, to the upside down. That's how season one ends. Season two, there's a ton of them. They go from one big one that's OP to a ton of them. And then it's more like... um. Like, I don't know, like, like an abundance. Like they try to kill you with a Roman force because I think one of the kids, one that doesn't have like a lot of teeth, raises one. Um, I'm going off all of memory here. But he raises one and that comes back into play when they're cornered by one. It's that one that saves their lives and all this like, spares them because it likes chocolate. Mm -hmm. Anyway, point is, but that way, in that one, L and Hoop Hopper, they go back in there and then he's killing them with a, a gun, a shotgun, while she's closing the portal. And that's how it ends. I forgot about that. So the point is, forgot about the shotguns. They and then also he was giving Hooper was giving them suppressing fire when they were leaving. When um, I, I call him Rudy because he's in Rudy, but Sam, the boyfriend, dies. But Hooper was also giving Mike, like, Mike, no. not Mike, season two. Oh, oh, when he died. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, yeah. Point is like, but then, Will's mom's boyfriend. But then, but then guns can work again. I call him Sam too. So my point is like the guns can work again, and then they take, Some. but then they take the guns away, and then you go back to this one, and they're like, well, no, only fire kills them. It's like you're retconning everything in the back, and it was like, well, it's just a little nitpick. But the point is like, if you don't start calling people out on this, the writing never gets better. This is a super easy thing that that can can be fixed. Mm -hmm. It's so super easy, especially, and this is my issue here. This is my biggest issue, and I'll leave this. Maybe on. they should just start throwing knives at them. Well, no, it's just about you have a TV series. 
I would I would accept accept these excuses more if it was a show a movie, a two hour movie. Explain it. Cool. Your crunch your time. When you have every episode is two to three hours long. Right. Things kind of get you have pushed to the side. So and like much time go. to fill things out. Right. And the only line is like bullets don't hurt them. And then you say you you put that sticky note up on the wall saying like guys remember bullets can't hurt them. Right. Now then by the way now Hooper flies like why don't explain it like you know, he doesn't fly. But my Hopper. Is, yes. But the point is. I just don't like that. I just, I, I, God, I'm sorry. It's just stuff that's kind of important because it, it builds tension. I'm okay if guns have no effect on them. That's fine. Then it builds suspense when people are using guns and it doesn't work. And then there's fear of like, you can't stop this thing. Then L's able to kill it. That's cool. And that's what season one did. And then if you're going to make it more like, okay, one, you need a bunch of them. Okay, that's scary now because like guns work, but there's like a thousand of them. And it's like, oh, that's really scary. So you can build the fear and tension that way. Mm -hmm. But you disrupt the fear and tension when you keep changing the rules. And when you're watching or reading something, you get submerged into the rules of whatever you're reading or watching. And that is what's so scary about it. But if the writer or the director keeps fluctuating the rules, it's harder to get invested. Midnight Mass, which I loved. I'm sorry, I know there's a ton of people that loved it. I loved it for the first half. And then we talked about Midnight Mass in one of our episodes. They so killed, they absolutely. I think oh, they, they destroyed man. it because they changed the rules. Oh, man. I could watch that all over again. Just not the last episode because it literally. You hate the last it. episode. I hated like the second to last episode. The whole boat and he dies thing is like. <sighs> Him dying in the boat wasn't that big of a deal to me. It was it was a shock, and that's what they wanted to get out but of it. It was, was a the terrible shock, shock factor. Was... But the way the whole town ended was just a, such a disappointment it's like really oh okay didn't have to happen like it that. was such a it was such a, didn't have to happen it's such a big thing of like everyone dies nothing exists mm -hmm. blah 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 mm -hmm. but that's not what they were gearing it up as like i really the way it was sold and marketed was not how it ended and i think that's the biggest thing that screwed him over possibly you know? yeah i don't mind you killing off your main character but i want to know how many shows have actually pulled that off where you market <sighs> one guy as your main character Good and then question. by the way all the people that you loved at the beginning, are none of them are going to round dead. at the end. Right. And this is not, again, for Game of Thrones, which is, again. Well, Game of Thrones didn't carry it out. But it did it well for like seven to six seasons. True. This had one season. So not even right. all the backup characters were, were like. So in Game of Thrones, some character main characters did die off, but the backup characters were building up to that point. Then they took over the mantle as more of a main character. This is one season, so you can't even like you don't even have time to be like, okay, we're gonna kill off everyone. We're not you cared emotionally about. invested in very many people at all. At all. And I'm sorry, the priest. But they killed <sighs> off everybody like that. You feel like you could get emotionally invested in. And them trying to have a redemption arc for the priest was like, no, bullshit. I'm sorry, like I liked it to a certain degree, but they kind of went overboard. Yeah, they did bullshit. You mean the pregnant lady and that lost her baby and then the guy. Okay, we're talking about a TV show that nobody's listened, watched. We'll see you guys next time. Oh, I'm sorry. I still have a scary thing in the news. Uh, I'll edit some of this out because maybe you guys like the riffing. Maybe you guys don't. I enjoyed riffing about this stuff. But anyway, scary stuff in the news. I don't get that right here. And this is stuff that I think is scary in the news. Um, I know it's like scares and ghost stories we have on this rant, but I like these rants because I really feel like that's what people enjoy. And I found that out with Fishing the DMV. Like, people like just passionate talk. Um, for better or worse. And so for this thing, this scary thing in the news is something that happened actually. Ooh, <clears throat> shark attacks, shark attacks are starting to go back up again this year. Uh, two people, sadly, in um, in Egypt, Red Sea, were killed uh, 600 meters away from each other. There is, if you want to find it on Reddit. At the same time? Within like 24 hours. Oh. 600, uh, you know, yes, yeah, within 24 hours of each other. So like basically the same evening, probably the morning, evening. Um, you can find uh, the video on Reddit if you would like to see the attack. It is extremely, it's not as intense as there's an Australian shark attack that happened in Sydney where you actually see the body, you see the shark come back to consume it. It's not as bad at that because I think it's almost worse because the lady's alive. You can tell from the picture that she does not have a leg and she's missing an arm because she's trying to swim back to shore. And you can just see the water turning bright red the whole time. Okay, that's way worse than the one in Australia. It, it, yeah, it is. But the only difference is like you the said, it's not as bad as the one in Australia. Because you see a corpse and you see a shark feeding on a corpse. Yeah, barely. It's like megapixeled. <clears throat> okay, so then this one's way worse. Okay, there you go. Um, but then, so shark attacks are. I don't think wherever you fall on that. I think these are one of the scariest things that can happen. I think there's something about uh, being attacked by a shark compared to anything else is just way. Where this is why me. Tommy doesn't like um, the beach. 
but anyway, but I like fishing on the water and beach. Anyway, the point is, so this is a great story to me because this happened in the Florida Keys where me and my lovely wife got married. So oh, no. Texas woman survives a shark attack while swimming with her family in the Florida Keys. Oh, she survives. Okay. <clears throat> no, no. Yeah, yeah, no. She's, she survives. But we'll get, we'll get to it. After jumping off the pontoon's platform several times, Mrs. Bruins attempted to do a flip. As she hit the water, her husband heard an unusually loud splash. And when she surfaced, she started screaming for help. Mrs. Burns then saw a huge cloud. He didn't understand at the moment what it was. Was it sand? We're in 10 feet of water. But then it turned a metallic color, uh -oh. like black. And then he quickly knew that his wife was swimming in her own blood. He jumped into the water to help her back to the vessel. She was covered head to toe in blood and had a large open wound on her right leg that looked consistent with a shark bite. Well, no fucking shit consistent with the shark <clears throat> several uh, florida wildlife uh, conservation officers were already on the water responding to an incident right, responding to an incident right away they were able to uh, intercept the couple's pontoon and help them dock the boat at the restaurant when i boarded i saw mrs burns she had half circle wound on her right leg oh you it didn't even take a chunk she's lucky it extended from the top of her hip to just above the knee no no it took a chunk oh <clears throat> uh Christopher Bowley explained to the reporter, a trauma team gave Mrs. Burns a blood transfusion and transported her by helicopter to Jackson South Medical Center in Miami. According to the Fire and Rescue, basing their uh, opinion on the size of the lacerations and the nature of the wound, medical experts confirmed that it was the result of a shark. Species and size are unknown. I'm assuming I'm going to spitball. It's probably either a bull shark or a lemon shark. I think it's probably a lemon shark. Officers provided an update to Mrs. Burns. Um, my own, that she's recovering well after undergoing multiple surgeries to fix the issue. Uh, after hours of surgery, the doctors were confident that she would live, but were unsure if she would be able to keep her leg. <gasps> oh, um, bad. So the bite went from her butt all the way to her knee. So think of the size of that bite area there. And I'll go back there just to make sure I confirm this information. I need pictures. Um, well, I can find pictures, but if there's a great way to get a YouTube thing flagged, it'll definitely be <laughs> that she had a, a wound on her right leg it extended from the top of her hip to just above her knee oh so, so right like her thigh basically. so the top what, I, of what we're gonna do now guys is for the camera i'm gonna have my wife stand up this is actually kind of part of what we're doing we have her stand up real quick and carly could you stand in front of the camera real quick oh, okay and just an angle is fine like that perfect keep walking forward keep walking forward and so what you really can't see here though is i want you to touch your your hip and then to your knee a little bit below your knee now think of the width of the head i can see a little bit you can see enough of it but the point is so so from there to there even if you cut that down a little bit think of the size of the head and then extrapolate that out because the head is actually the narrow point of the Anyway, back back on the chair. Whoa. Don't worry, you'll get your only fine someday. So I said, look at the size of that thigh. I didn't speak it into the microphone. You all had to read my lips in that moment. So anyway, based on that, <sighs> after hunger. the first restoration surgery, they were hopeful that she'll keep her leg, but Lindsay still needs a third surgery to complete the second phase of the reconstruction. Doctors are now hopeful that she will eventually regain most of the function in her leg. Woo! Um, I'm really going to limit our bull shark. Probably is what did it just the hit on that thing like the size of that animal though too and this is the thing i've, I've been in the water with sharks before i, I get to, i got to dive with them i respect them it's not like that it's just it's the fact of how quickly they can sneak up on you scary like i was actually surfing once and i had one go under my board um it was like no real danger it was probably about four or five feet long but the fact is like you didn't feel him it's just the thing that you could be floating there and then i turned around and i saw it go under my board and it, it was a shark and the fact is like it's not like I was scared when I saw a stingray in the water. A grizzly bear can't sneak up on you that close. A tiger can't, like for the most part. I could be wrong about the tiger. But the, the fact is... Because <laughs> darn tootin' Tom's been in the safari. <laughs> He's been out in the jungle. That's Africa. There you go, jungle. There you go. <laughs> he knows. He knows if a tiger can sneak up on you. But the fact is, like, I think, like, I think a shark can get closer to you without, it, without you knowing than a big cat mm. i could be wrong let me know in the comment section but the fact is that's what's so scary and it's so how shallow it could be 10 feet everyone was diving in and no one saw right. anything that's, that's, and this is the, that's the depth Keys, of guys. a pool 
guys, this you is know? in the Florida Keys, gin clear. Yeah. No, and this is what this is why the story freaked me out so much. This is not like at the beach where there's a lot of rolling water. There's there's current. Right. There's a lot of chop. You can't really see. This is a swimming pool that they were diving into constantly. Not a pool pool, but like yeah, it's, it's like super clear, no waves. Probably there's very there's no waves in the Keys. Like nothing, it's glass. And they just jumped in and bam, just done. Depends on how far they were out in the ocean. Because when I would it they was the golf side. When I went snorkeling, then um. I mean, there was, it was pretty choppy out there. Yeah. So anyway, I'll link this uh, article in the episode description. And don't worry, guys, this summer I am doing a full shark episode for Spears and Ghost Stories because, like, this is my sh- channel and I would like to do one just to really talk about This is my channel and I'm going to do incidents. what I want. And there's, I'm going to tease this. And this will be a while, so this will be teased. One of the attacks we're going to go over is this guy. He wins the lottery. He wins the lottery. He was surfing in, <laughs> he was surfing in East Africa. He got hit by a shark bitten badly on the leg gets in his car was left all of his stuff there like except his phone he left all of his stuff there was super thirsty got out of the car to go get some water got attacked by a lion punched the lion got back to his car where he started to pass out from his wounds and the pride set up shop around his car until police came by and shooed them off and then got him to the hospital. Wait, you said he got bit by a shark. And a lion. And a lion. In the same day. I'm so lost. How? That's good. Just stay tuned because that's going to be one of the stories. This guy like won the lottery. He literally in the same day got hit by a Jeez. shark. He and on his way lottery. to the hospital, he, he got attacked by a lion. <laughs> and he that's lived. Not... He lived both times. But just the fact, I just, I laughed so hard when I read the story because you think, He's so intense about like I survived. Technically, you don't have to tell that story later because you just told it to us. This is no one's gonna remember this, but it's like it's just I don't know why that one was so funny to me. It's like ah, uh, God, this is the worst day of my life. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> and then you're drinking a water. This big fucking cat comes yeah. out, and you just pass out in the car. Like all right, this is anyway. So guys, I don't know why that story made me laugh. I have a terrible dark humor, but it's like at that point you play the lottery because it's you win. There's you or own lose every you majorly lose. No, you own every conversation. Hey, what happened? You know, whoa, oh, what's the uh, craziest thing you, you ever broke your to leg? You? I got attacked by a fucking shark and then a goddamn lion, same day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. Anyway, guys, that was week 46. Sorry for all the issues we had. Um, let us know down in the comment sections. What do you think of Stranger Things season four? Love it, hate it. Let me know. You know, any Carly, any other words? Thanks for tuning in, guys. We love you. See you next time on Spirits and Ghost Stories. Bye. Bye.